A few minutes later, two separate groups were forming, the first coming from the underground, getting ready to go back to the cathedral, and the second, consisting of Sohan, Constantine, Helena, and Florian, coming from the cavern leading to the stable. Outside, it was almost as if they were in the Busi countryside, if it weren't for the violet-colored sky and the varied shades of red and bluish-gray. To the east, everything seemed darkened. The yellow color of autumn leaves gave way to dark shapes, hidden by clouds of mist and fog. The trees and the ferns seemed to progressively disappear, only to be replaced in the distance by a local species of dark bramble bushes with long, sharp thorns that created a very hostile and natural form of barbed wire. The exit to the cavern was located to the southwest in a wooded area that one had to cross to reach the main east-west area where the fighting took place. Am I dreaming or did I just come outside with girls only? Hello, I'm Constantine. You can call me Kostya. Do I have to remind you that we're on patrol here and that we're supposed to keep our eyes open? That's just it. I opened my eyes and mm, I saw a dream walking. Florian, right? Yes, I'm Florian, but I've heard all about you, so for now, let's stick to the mission, okay? No sweat, baby. You've got me here to protect you. Stay close to me and you'll be fine. <laughs> cool. It's good to know we're really safe, that's for sure. As they walked, Helena asked question after question about the kidnapping of her parents, about the Black Fortress, the ghosts, the captured musicians, Mark Igor's spells, his recent alliance with Teresa Wagner, his breeding and training of dragons, his mercenaries, and so on. She also wanted to hear about the attack of the horsemen and the wolves, and how they had succeeded in destabilizing such a powerful army by dispersing them, and by launching numerous lightning-like attacks, retaining the advantage of terrain and speed. Helena wasn't interested in military strategy, but she was amazed by the courage and fidelity of the horses and the wolves. They had attacked armed soldiers and monsters ten times their size, and yet they wreaked havoc in their lines and forced the terrible queen to retreat. Who knows how many human lives they had saved that day. She hoped that one day humans would realize the debt they owed these animals and that they would learn to respect them. They left the wooded area and turned onto the road leading to the cathedral on the left. The word road was hardly exact, the Queen's army and its dragons had transformed it into a huge path of broken and trampled on tree branches. The earth had been turned into a five meter wide stretch of black mud with deep imprints of giant hooked paws. On the left, the path widened even more towards the combat zones. There was burning vegetation all over, as well as dead soldiers lying on the ground, trampled, burned, or totally crushed. Helena tried as hard as she could not to look at these combat atrocities, 